It's Monday, our kid. It's sunny in Manchester, but I didn't get Oasis tickets. I'm pretty good about that. But this is Every Trade, Behind the Build, episode 55. So welcome back to Every Trade Behind the Build, a mid-week edition. And guess what? I'm at mine and your favorite place, our grabs and aggregates yard. I've just had a really good meeting with a consultant that we're looking to retain, who basically is gonna help us get everything set up in this yard, help us build up the recycling side, and hopefully eventually, get us into some big players in the aggregate game. That's exciting, that's got my juices flowing. So, very busy start to the week. Not as busy in the yard as we'd hope. The dig, who actually now has removed the helmet, but he still doesn't want any close up, is making some more space. So you'll notice we had quite a lot of muck that we inherited there that we're slowly getting rid of. I think we had about 20 loads. It looked like nothing, but we had about 20 loads. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a massive hardcore bay for the 40 mil down recycle that we're going to make. It's literally going to be able to hold about 300 ton and we're going to send one of the conveyors right over so it dumps in. So we bought these blocks here and what we're going to do, the bit where the machine is tracking through now, we're going to build another wall there that will actually not only separate the safe path through but it'll retain this part of this monster bay that we're going to build. We've got a, quite a bit to do before we can get to that point. We've got to play a bit of yard Tetris and that is definitely what I'm learning about yard. You've got to think like a snooker player and make three moves, thinking about three or four moves ahead. So yeah, it's hard work. We've got a good plan for it. We know we're going to be heading in the right direction, but just, just having that meeting now with someone that's been in the industry for a long time, straight away, he was actually really uh, impressed with our setup, but he just pointed out a couple of really simple mistakes that we're making that we're gonna rectify straight away. And I'm all about that. There's so many people that know more than me about this game. There's so many people that know more than me about construction, but I also know a lot more than other people. And I'm not afraid to ask questions. And, and there's certain people out there that don't mind passing on their knowledge. But yeah, the other day, you remember, I went to meet Dale at a job that we're doing for a school that we've worked at before where they've got an issue with some flooding. Well, we shot a lot of that on Friday, but it just wasn't at a point where we could bring it in the episode. So I'm now gonna teleport myself over to that school job with Dale, who now everyone's calling the Swiss Army Knife. What a guy he is. Over to Dale and me over there. Yeah, I'll well, do that, definitely. Right, so we're on site at a primary school. We've probably left this a bit late in the summer, but we've been so busy, we're doing this job for free as a favour to the school. We've worked at school before, they've been very good customers and my kids come to school as well. So one of the teachers has asked me what we've got here, this is a forest school. So what we've got here is an area where the kids come, play, make things, go searching, all sorts. It's brilliant for kids with ADHD, ADD, and other kind of additional needs. It's a subject matter quite close to my heart. So the issue is this area now floods really badly and it never used to. We stood on now a mound of muck that a 
different contractor who did the running track has basically thought they were saving the school money has mounded it up here since then there's been an issue so in my logical brain i think there's either a culvert or a soak away or a drain that's blocked here or maybe just this clay non-porous material is just basically preventing the rest of the site from blocking the answer, the answer the truth is we don't have a clue so dale's here with our three tonner the wackanoosin and we're just going to dig some holes and see aren't we needle in a haystack what we might do if we have a bit of an idea we might put in some kind of soak away old school soak away dig a big hole find where it starts to drain put some rocks in some clean gravel backfill it and see if that does the job obviously i can't spend loads of time here i can't throw loads of money at it we're really busy we're busy on jobs busy on the yard but i want to really try and help this school out because they're great with my kids and they're great with the local area and schools don't have enough money as you know so dale's going to keep you up to date he's got his head cam and we're going to see how we get on god knows if you've got any ideas what you think this might be let us know over to you got cousin Alex on the camera here so what we've done we've dug a couple of trial holes and we found clay and above it is actually quite nice clean soil what we think's happened is all the water off the playing field drained over here because it's quite a low point of the whole ground but now this soil's been put here it's either preventing almost doing like a dam and preventing the water from draining away and that bit's getting overwhelmed or it stop it running to some kind of hidden drain or culvert there or something so what i think i'm going to do we're going to backfill this now these trial holes so that's done because it's a job for free and it's we've not really been contracted to do it and we've got minimal time to do it i'm going to build oh sorry i'm going to go and dig a big hole here i'm going to do an old school soak away so i'm going to dig a big hole here I'm going to put nice clean hardcore in. I'm going to line it with a membrane like Taram or something like that. I'm going to put hardcore big rocks in it there. The old school way of doing a soak away. And then I'm going to line it with a clean washed aggregate like a, um, a chipping pea gravel or something like that. And I'm going to enclose the whole thing with the membrane. And then I'm going to backfill it with the soil. And that I'm going to see if that has any kind of positive effects on this. I'm going to pop back when it rains and if the drainage i saw what this was like when it was flooding it was really bad where i'm stood now is all water it's like a lake if that has any kind of positive effects i'm going to let the teachers know as well see they so they can tell me and what if that's not had any effect i'll get back to the drawing board and i might have, to have a chat with the school but if it actually is improving it i might then put other soakaways connect some, some kind of land drain system and work out something like that but ideally we need to find either a natural point where it drains or a culvert or something or a manor or summit somewhere but for now because i want to get this back up and running for them i'm going to try this old school approach with the soak away and see if that has any effect but we'll keep you in the loop interesting job actually it's a really nice area this i can see why they want it working because not many kids get to how are you you all right just doing a bit of filming for youtube don't mind me I'm well known around here so yeah um, so yeah we'll see see you have a nice day we'll let you know on the channel to see if this makes a difference So what we found is a drain just by potluck. So we're digging this hole for the soak away and we've clipped a drain and straight away it's filling with water. So 
the logic is we think there was a manhole or a drain over this mound here and this may be it's like an inter like a y section that intersects it so i think for now we're going to stick and do this soakway option here because the school hasn't got the budget to start moving all this muck away we'll dig this here see if this alleviates it but if that doesn't work or whatever we're going to dig back and expose this drain and hopefully we'll find where the manhole is and then we'll put some land drain system in but for now we're just going to dig this and do the soakway and see if that helps interesting hi guys so back here at uh, the bramall primary school um yeah it's full of water again come this time with a tracked uh, dumper just to save because it, it, it's so boggy down here it's just it's making a right mess so um we are just putting some big big rocks um into the bottom of this hole We've got to fill it past halfway probably three quarters of the way up with these big rocks uh, line it with some uh, like a, a breathable membrane which we have done in the bottom line it again over the top and then put some pea gravel um, you know about a foot off the top and and, and, uh, and backfill it full of uh, the soil that we've got or a bit of clay soil and try and get it uh, nice and flat tampered uh, make it yeah so it's nice and level and yeah, hopefully that will help with this bit of a marshland it, it's yeah not the best but uh, it, it's not too bad it's well hopefully not too bad now we'll have to spread around all this clay uh, over this pile which used to be obviously nice and level around here um, so we're gonna have to just put it on top of that and let the grass grow over the top again and and uh, so the kids have got a bit of a nice area to to learn in um, so yeah, we'll uh, crack on trying to get this hole filled. There we go, so that's where this sinkhole is now, the drain away. Just put some wood chippings over this clay. And yeah, it's a bit boggy still. Leveled it off as best as I can. Um, just got to let, let the grass sort of grow back now. Might get some seeds, seed it up, but yeah. Looking, looking better, hopefully it sorts a bit of this. Not so good damp out, it's water log. So yeah, day in the life of every trade, something different every day. What's 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 to come tomorrow? Who knows? So I'm back in the yard where I was before I went to the school, but I was at the school on Friday. Anyway, so what is amazing about this yard, and it's like the gift that keeps on giving, is it's actually bigger than we thought it was. What we've done is we've had a chat with our lovely landlord and we've got another section there that we can use. So the dig is gonna clear all that and we're gonna be able to use that back corner, which doesn't sound or look like a lot, 
but it's a big, what is it? Probably 20 square meters additional that we'll be able to utilize. The guys have done amazing on the uh, processing. It's hard for context and maybe Hollywood will chuck the drone up, but this pile now has been consolidated or processed. So we've now got almost half of the space back that was there. So we've processed most of it, but we've also heaved it up a little bit. So what we're doing at the moment, again, like I've said, is playing a bit of Tetris in the yard. And, and that, that's quite difficult because it's not like it's already we've got a flat blank canvas. So at the moment, this is the pre-screened topsoil that we're now going to have to sit on for a bit because we haven't got enough space over the other side where the screener is to get push it through. And we're not really selling the soil fast enough to do that. So I think what we're going to have to do is sit on that. And yet, if it has to be screened again, it's got to be screened again. The, the key in the yard game, from what I can gather, is not double handling, but in some ways it's a bit unavoidable. So we're trying our hardest to streamline the processes with the limited space and equipment that we've got, not to double handle. But what I will say, and I've said it all along, this beast, oh, honestly, it's amazing. We're so lucky to have it, but that's only part of the jigsaw. What we need to do then is, the three products that it's sending out is to basically mechanize, automate those bits. So off each belt, we can either sell it straight away or it goes straight into the crusher. It goes straight into the screener. And all we've got to do is load once. The lads in the yard have got to load once. And then all we're doing is arranging where that stuff goes. But like I say, the way we're gonna do all this stuff here is getting cleared. We're gonna level out the yard here. We're not gonna spend loads of money on it yet. We're just gonna get it nice and stable. That's getting gone by the landlord. And we're gonna send one of the conveyors over into that bay there and generate literally a pile straight off the machine. So that's the plan anyway. So yeah, it's finally happening. Back in Liverpool, over at Preferred, Alex is gonna bring you an update. Preferred stacks at the moment and we love it because we're coming out of holiday season. But as always, the boys, I've got a lot to talk about. So today we're in Preferred Joinery and the bifold doors that you've seen are made up and now up. Richard, the main man, has done these ones. Craig's been putting the Osmo oil on and then there's another set that's now getting done in, which is the windows that we spoke about. These are the doors. You can see, look at them. The size of them as well. Size are they, Rich? Three metres? Nice and big. I can't even slide them because you just paint Craig's just painted them. So um, they're still a little bit wet. What are they? Two six. Yeah, so two six high. So they're the little locks there, are they? They're good as well. See these. So this is it, isn't it? So you've already started putting them. Yeah, I put the track in with the wheels, ready for the doors to go in. Um, can't do. Oh yeah. Well. So this one is slightly different, it's not a door, it's a sliding bifold window, isn't it? So it's gonna be two mm -hmm. sashes there, two sashes there. Do you yeah, call yeah. them sashes still? Yeah, the big sashes, and they've got like a four four inch uh, styles and heads, so that they are chunky like. So slide that way and that way, obviously you'll have a glass panel. No, no. So oh, one, one, way? one set of doors all slide that way and then the other one, same ah, size, okay. all go the other the other way, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so. yeah. Get mixed up there, ain't I? So yeah. wrong. So yeah. So you start to put your track in, haven't you? Yeah, I've put the track in with all the all the wheels ready for the doors to be on, but I can't put them in yet because they haven't sent the aluminium track. What the the plastic one goes into? Which is that, isn't it? So it's like that, but they've only sent the plastic. So so we need the other send, the alley bit, which then the narrow tomorrow sits in there like that. It's the same before off camera. It's a bit how much of a snug fit it is, like literally. It's like perfectly snug fit, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Good mate. No gaps there, eh? You know? Yeah, so. So yeah, so the process is then just hang the doors into the track. Yeah, I'll hang each door, yeah, separately. So uh, normally I'll, I'll uh, machine the locks as it goes, you know what I mean? Because the track's locks not Locks being in, the bolts going up and down. The bolts at the top and bottom. But as the track's not in yet, I'll, I'm just going to machine all the locks for now, so everything's ready and machined then. So it's basically yeah. just screwing the doors on and... Yeah, um, the nice so, so these two are identical, but going the opposite way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the door, which is that there, isn't it? 
That's the big door. What goes next to that frame, yeah? So that's the front door for the bar, front which you have to see bar, yeah. as well. So in there, is that going to have glass in the middle then? Yeah, glass panel in the middle, yeah. And like a big bar handle or something? It will have, yeah. Mm. yeah. Again, all Osmo oil, isn't it? All Osmo, yeah, yeah. So we'll do one coat of one coat of Osmo oil. Well, yeah, it's, it does need like two or three, but he's going to ask Sean if he wants to us to do another coat here. So I was just saying to Richard then, do we get a new website made? And I'm whispering to an organ here, they're all looking at me. <laughs> and um, they're coming to get headshots today, so they messaged me saying, can we come and get headshots so, so on the website? And Richard's saying, don't say nothing to no one. <laughs> just say it up. So, I've got to go out for the day. So here's a nice little one for you. This one is just a casement window, so the one-off job that Danny's just been knocking up on the bench. The, the lads have just said to me as well, it's going out like this because they wanted to paint it themselves, didn't want us to do it. Uh, they have obviously saving on a little bit of cost, but a nice little casement window. Um, how did you open it then? Yeah. Oh yeah. Got little stays on it as well. Is that the hoof there? Yeah, I've got them. There we go. Nice them windows though, you can see the detail in them as well, how good it is, even the profile all the way round. So neat. And as I say, this hasn't even been painted. So like normally when things do get painted, it hides a lot of blemishes as well, inconsistencies on the timber. But on this one, as you can see, it's a nice clean finish. And um, the job itself, the way it's been done, was good. So obviously it's a cost saving exercise for the customer, going for the cheaper option with them. Uh, but yeah, a little bit flim, a little bit hard to get your head around. I think once you've done it a couple of times, you probably know how to do it, but probably the old fashioned way of doing the windows. But yeah, still nice though. Nice job. So as you can see there, the weight of that door. Wow. Mate, heavy that, all that. Be nice on the front door of a house, but as I say, this is the door that's going on with all of them bifolds which are on the shop front for the new bar and you can see the weight of it like how heavy that is once this gets stained up and fitted it's going to look really really good and i'll say over the years prefer they've done loads of shop fronts uh, loads of bar fronts restaurant fronts and all that and they're really good at it they've probably done every single every restaurant you know in liverpool they've done it uh, it's mad how many times mike said to me have we done that one have we done this and you can see now because you can tell what they look like what they have done. But as I say, this one's going to look good. There's a glass going in there and there's going to be a nice big handle. Yeah, one side's going in as well. But once this is all installed, which we're doing, we're doing the install on this, it's going to look good. So I'm going to try my best to make sure either myself or Niall can get out and get there when Dave's fitting it so we can show you it. And then once it's fully finished, we'll get down there and show you that as well. We've also been instructed to build a door on the front door of someone's house over the water in the Whittle, which is going to be a pivot door. So this door obviously is going to be hinged one side. This pivot door is going to be bigger than this, and it's going to be cladded in like an oak cladding. But it's got like a profile, like, a, like you know when you see the panelling. It's going to have panelling on it, but it's pivot, so it'll pivot from like three quarters or a third of the way in of the door. So it'll have a pivot, so it'll pivot through. Um, that's going to be a nice one again, again, which we've just been instructed on, so we'll be able to show you that. Yeah, let me get this back. This so you're is making set of gates? Yeah. And then this is your template to do the arch? This is the template to do the actual so head. You make, what do you do to do that? To draw it? <coughs> what, I be, what I have to do is get a piece of ply on the floor, find out exactly how wide there's 74 and a half, so mark 74 and a half, find the middle. And once you find the middle, you have to get your uh, circumference. No, I'm trying to think of the way. What are they called? The um, the what? 
<laughs> <laughs> what we used to do the sweep. Why, why, why is the word escape me? Um, I don't find it. No, no. Um, to do the sweep. <laughs> shut up, laughing at me, I can't think. <laughs> what the hell is it called? Not angle finder, no? No, no, it's a. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. I'll go, I'll go and get them. I'll go and get them. Stay there. Trammels? Yeah, these are called trammels, these. So, what, you made it yourself then? Yeah, yeah. So, this is the piece of wood? So yeah, just need a long piece of wood. Find out it's, uh, it's a six inch difference from the middle to the end. So, I'll show you. It says, see, 105, which is the highest point of the gate. 99 is that point there at the corner. So, that means it's a six inch difference sweep. So that sweep from there, if you do a straight line from there to that point there, that'll come down, that'll be six inches. That's the difference. Oh, and then an I'll just draw it with that then. Right, well, you don't use that. We only attach it to that. What I have to use is one of them long pieces oh, there. Yeah. I drew a line on the floor here, as you can see. Yeah. There's a line here on the floor. So basically, you have to put it on there and keep doing it until you get to the point you're happy with the boy. Hello, sir. Oh, I'll be right with you. Just on camera, I'll be with you now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so basically that's it once i've got that size i have to bring it right round to get me 74 and a half and then you just put that on a piece of them yeah yeah but these are the styles actually oh yeah that's the head there okay we've well, laminated it together this morning yeah so basically that will get cut out of there and that gives us the head and so then, you've had to laminate them together to get the size yeah on yeah that's a bundle together there's the styles for them so they're quite chunky four inch by four inch nice. they're the two styles and this is the head so once i've got that together then i can work properly on the gates then i know my exact sizes anyway you can get them and then what do you do for the infill and bits side then like the tongue and groove bit uh, well i have to make boards for them because uh, these are getting tng boards See, like so these so are tng then what is that a detail or is it then yeah th this is a mid rail but oh, it yeah. is mixed through it like that because yeah you're looking at the front of it it's like so x-ray you know yes but there's a mid rail in the middle there which obviously the boards are going to attach to so these boards are going to be 7 by one there's another gate on the other side but so we'll got... make them out of fresh timber then ourselves yeah this which is this yeah this stuff here 7 by one rough sawn so this will get plain to size and then we make tng out of it and obviously so let's see evan then it's out of fresh timber isn't it yeah yeah it's absolutely fresh timber yeah came in this morning and it's hopefully straight so that'll all get planed up to size and then we uh, make the TNG then groove one side put it yeah, on so what are you going to do put it together dry send it down there to them yeah what yeah once, I, once I'm happy that all the sizes check out and this <laughs> this isn't getting painted so it's got to be spot on Bang on I was just yeah. saying that before can't I, you know can't get a mix going like you know what I mean and then get all the filler in <laughs> so it's got to be spot on yes yeah, so you need to make sure it's right don't you i absolutely do yeah so yeah they're gonna stay in your then? uncle to answer for are what they going to stay in or something are they they're going to get well i, I assume they're going to get stained but maybe they're going to treat it first because it's on the outside they'll probably i don't know probably timber treat it i would imagine but it's either going to get stained or it's going to get primed i've no idea nice My, mine's not a reason why mine's just to get on with it yeah yeah so that's so when do you reckon then couple of days uh, this will probably I'll probably get the frame to put together today the frame will probably go up today and then obviously start getting the, the, the last like hour or so get on back onto the styles and then form the gates so I've actually well I've made the gates I'm just going to be basically left with two styles in a mid rail and be nothing there then I have to do me working out then exactly mm. where I have to cut it so so, oh yeah so then boards meet so they meet in the middle mm -hmm. so they really have got to be spot on so i think probably the best thing for me to do is to arch the head rebate it put it together and then draw it so anything that you draw inside that frame is going to fit perfect mm -hmm. you know it'll fit perfect because it can't be anything but it, how many, how many gates have you done over these loads I, i've done well I've, I've done a few like these with arch gates it don't, we don't really get many of them but obviously over the last 26 years I've probably done about maybe 20, 30 something like that yeah but I all, said more than that no they don't come around no. that often mate no no oh but that it, style you mean that style mm -hmm. with an arched head yet they're normally just straight square ones mm -hmm. square ones have done about 10,000 of them yeah. well obviously these that's come the along one, that's the other gate in it yeah that's i don't think it. this is for a job for anyone i think it's just a test for me to see if i can do it <laughs> i don't actually think it's for a customer <laughs> you hope not mix just like that yeah you f***ed that up good at all <laughs> <laughs> sorry swearing <laughs> so that's it for today on preferred joinery again loads of stuff always happening them uh, bifold doors or bifold windows and the big door for the bar that we're doing I'm going to look amazing when they're finished the gates that Rich uh, Devo's doing are decent as well 
and the other set of gates that we showed you last week where we had a little bit of a miscommunication they're next on to this to be built as well so they'll be good so stay tuned and come back to watch that but for now i've got to go to another job and i'm going to give you back to manchester wow so this is what it feels like to be tall bit of a weird feeling for me but yeah who would have thought how happy i'd be standing on a pile of muck but i don't see this as muck i see this as money i do honestly i look at these piles now and i was just speaking to that waste consultant before and he sees it the same as he's on the train and he sees piles of muck and he sees oh there's money sat there but it's not as simple as that there's a lot to put in place before we get to that point but essentially what i want to make here is an outdoor factory a factory that literally recycles and reprocesses or processes aggregate and rather than chuck them in a big hole and they're a waste to everyone actually do some good with it supply ourselves and supply other people that's my dream but we'll get there we'll definitely get there but i've not forgotten we are still a building contractor and i still love construction and that is our bread and butter as you know we are massively up against it at project 849 there is now six working days to what we call practical completion where we've got a handover a compliant project where in theory someone could just move in and start living there we've actually got a little bit of wriggle room a couple of days after they can do external stuff which is good because we've got a lot to do but let's have a look over there and see how bizzo and the team are getting on with the new dream team which is Dale and cousin Alex he's worried that he's just going to stand there and look stupid <laughs> aren't you yeah are you play football tonight no well I thought I was going to the job in Aversock oh yeah well there you go you're not playing football tonight that's no. what I like it dedicate oh you're sweating you've obviously been working hard yeah so they've now finished the school job and apparently that's gone really well and then um, the customer's happy I tell you who isn't happy my business partner Alex who's up against it in Liverpool because this is where this is the business end of our year on our project so over to mr riddick will tell you more did you mention my name yeah she knows about your name everything what she knows she about uh yeah i know the fella i know alex so welcome back to liverpool i'm just saying this line again now because niall forgot to press record so i'll talk for about five minutes then only messing <laughs> uh, so yeah so we're on another job that's been ripped out and this is what i wanted christian to rip out first before he went to green bank and ripped that out without saying so but it's ripped out and we're rolling them, as you can see. But you'll probably find as well, oh, uh, everyone does students accommodation, they all do the same sort of stuff. They'll be under pressure to finish property, like the Albert Edwards, like the Adelaide that you've seen us do, in time for the 1st of July moving, a 1st of August moving, and a 1st of September moving, when the students are going to be moving into the property, because they're already pre-let and they're ready to get done. And then you'll always find, sort of the same sort of time, now you're starting the next one, because you buy property, in your pipeline that you're getting ready then to move the lads into to build out for next year so this one along with green bank is going to be ready for next july so we've got loads of time to get this built not that we're going to wait until july christian yeah we're going to try and get it done as quick as we can <laughs> um but, but we've got until then basically because we'll start marketing this property in october november this year 
we'll fill it before Christmas and then next July it'll be done finished just like you've seen the other ones and then the tenants will be moving in so same process same layout this one same layout as the other Adelaide over the road identical in terms of what's happening downstairs and all the bedrooms so the only difference is when we make little desi design uh, changes and that's it on this one probably st still use the same colour scheme same furniture same headboards same with the lights we're going to do that again um, and maybe mix the kitchen up this time don't know we'll see maybe have a different kitchen but we'll see how we get on but as I say it's going to be a, a like for like building as over the road that you're seeing getting built out but at this stage now the floors are out and as you see here this floor will stay in we'll throw the loft floor in for the loft two loft rooms and then we take this floor out we don't take the whole house out we just don't do it as I say we don't like to be kept awake at night when we've got the storms especially when we had the storm the other week I think it was last week mm. it was bad wasn't it it was bad a couple of trees blown down and stuff like that if we had one of these buildings empty like that then me I would not be sleeping um, so yeah we leave the floor in put that floor in take this floor out put the next floor in take the ground floor out put that floor in so same thing rinse and repeat and that's it no difference that there is some contraption that the previous landlord had this is a shower looks like a jail jail shower doesn't it <laughs> but uh, the lads can't even break it down it's that hard so let's see bulletproof so i can see why he puts them in his properties because they don't break because we can't even break them the lads have got to get the grind out to cut it down um but yeah i'm looking over the road now i can see the lads cracking on outside and i'm also looking behind at another one of our properties that i've been speaking to christian on which did have a dormer on and has got a dormer on um the, beat, the, the trims come off the, the sides yeah so you need to try and work out how we're going to get them back on you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but it's good so we'll have you know loads of property going on all in one area yeah. uh, it makes it easier to manage easier to do your maintenance every year mm. easier to do everything you like it don't you better better in one area like in four other area yeah. and then run around in gold day because the phone is it's never stopped yeah, so you so you remember this was the old bathroom because we've shown you this house before it was ripped out I had a little walk around with me on it i mean you was with me weren't you yes i would too uh, so this was the old bathroom which is gone the lads are just on a break which has allowed us to just get a little bit of filming done the dust is less dust as well um, but they're just ripping the rest of this out upstairs and then all the stuff's downstairs and as the skips are coming to fill in the skips and in the back end again so we've got a process going whereby any stuff that's literally pushed down to the front the skip comes they all work on that get the new skip in and then um, get it going as quick as possible and they're in and out then it allows us to start work uh, in a much quicker time frame as well just looking at the gallow brackets that i put in they're not big enough are they then i think to swap it so in this property the previous landlord had already taken out the chimney breasts which has saved us a massive job saved us three mm, days three two. days easy and a couple of quid yeah. uh, it saved us having to get rid of it so you know probably a couple of like, 1500 quid something like that easy easy yeah. we saved uh, by not get, having to get that out but the gallow brackets that they put in I don't know how long ago it was does not good enough then yeah. so what we're going to do is once we've put the floor in for the loft we'll then work off that floor to then replace them for better ones and the steel plate which you look we've probably looked at now we'll be getting taken out and cut back are you going to put steels in there instead steel yeah, um, yeah. Six so we'll put, we'll put steels in six before steels two of them in and three yeah three brackets three, again three, three better brackets better than them um and then yeah and then as i say all the brickwork will all be patched in you'll see as well on the photos that you've been seeing the way they done the loft conversion they just put the itchy stuff the insulation pushed like in all the that stuff there they just pushed that into the the rafters and then boarded it that was what they done uh, so obviously it must have been done a long time ago yeah. it's got two velox windows which they're going we'll get rid of them One's been left open again, has the Christian? Yes, yeah, one is open just for the ventilation. <laughs> it's raining. It's trying to look now where we could be. So, yeah, over the weekend, the tires are working outside, um, cutting, and obviously you're not really meant to be working on the weekend. But because people are under pressure, they just chose to, but they couldn't get it done through the week. And I thought all the cutting was done before the weekend, but they've had to make three small cuts they said with a grinder which made a bit of noise but bear in mind just looking down the road there's like three or four other jobs going on just on this one road all like hmo type conversions i was told that they were all in as well on the same day this neighbor i, don't, I think it's next door but one or two down from where we are 
Es kommt ab, kicken auf zu den Zahlen. About the noise, and you're doing the bank holiday weekend and stuff for them. Albeit, it was only three cuts for 20 minutes. Uh, but then they started dishing all kinds of, not insults, but like making remarks about me and our company and what we're doing in the area and stuff and going, going on about planning and we shouldn't be doing HMOs and going on about a couple of other things. And most of it's all false facts. Like I'd love to just have a conversation with them, explain things. Like we're not out here to try and do anything bad to them. We bought an existing student property that we've gone forth to get certificate of lawfulness. We've not gone in for planning. We've gone in for certificate of lawfulness to prove that it was a student property. That house that we converted on, the other Adelaide, that's nearly finished, was a student house for 20 years. We wouldn't have bought it. We wouldn't have paid the money that we paid for it. You can go and get a house for 120 grand, 130 grand. That's not been used as a HMO type student house. But you'd have the risk of not getting plan admission, which you won't get. Or you go and pay 190, 200 grand for a house that has got like a service history of having students in, which is what we did. Why would we go and pay 190, 200 grand for a house and go, f- go for the headache of spending the money we spent on a house to not do it properly? It doesn't make sense, you know what I mean? So I'd love to have a conversation with them anyway and say, you do know it was all these student houses anyway, you can see that it was. They've lived there for how many years? But now all of a sudden, because we've made it a bit bigger and better, if they'd gone against us and me because they were weren't happy over the news as well. But yeah, so they was throwing a lot of insults anyway about us and myself naming me and stuff and talking about things that they thought they think they know is right, but it's not right. Um, it's wrong information. It's it's it, 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 it's sort of the right information, but in the wrong context. So that's why I love to have a conversation. But I don't know who it was. I'm trying to find out who it was now. <laughs> Proper domestic going on up there now. Christine, you want to go and investigate? Not necessary. Not necessary, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, again, in there, we love when we start a new job. Christine, you like starting them, don't you? Yes, I love it. Like, because what, what happens is when you're on a job, it, when you get to the end, you can get frustrated on certain things and because you're on the press to get it done and you've been there that many times, you feel like you need somewhere new to go, albeit over the road. It just feels better, no. doesn't it? It just feels better. So, like, when we start, if not, I, I know when we see these jobs like this now, you, you're ready to start again, have a new go. All the problems that you faced on there, you're trying to overcome, you make it better on here. Um, but yeah, do you think that skips too high? Mm, I think it's just just Looks a distant me, level. Christian. Just a distant level, I think. Have to cut that one, yeah. Uh, but the headboard is not mine. Now so that's a problem. That's basically. what happens. Yeah, that's happening. So if you get all the, the news keeps, probably next day it's all the field the neighbors. Yeah, that's so why we <laughs> make enough pyre for make sure in one day we're able to feel. You know, so anyway, getting, getting wet now. Getting the car goes the next job. Um, so yeah, and you're back to Manchester now, and they will take it from here. <laughs> so yard life. That's the good bit. This is the bad bit. The tracks on our five tonner. They've been going for a bit and Dale and my mate Dan Ingham warned that they were going to go and we need to get a spare track in for when they do go, but it's gone. But luckily we're learning and we've got our replacement track. So this will be Dale's job. And uh, talking of the Swiss Army knife that is Dale, if you look at the conveyor, you'll see that we've got two new rams on it which now means that we can set it to any height for the stockpile so i try and do what i say i'm gonna do and we're gonna get this up to standard we've got a bit to do it's working which is a bonus and it's actually making us money already because the lads say they can't do without it but now we can set it to any height but dale being the good youtuber that he is filmed the process so let's take a look at dale in the past getting this ready for the future. Hi guys, 
there. So fitted the new rams to the conveyor. Um, got Alex here just trialing it out, doing a bit of a workout. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> going pretty high actually. Loads better than before. You've got to stop pile these like, piles so high now. So laughing. Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll do. Alex. Um, yeah, spot on. Nice little fix there. Quite expensive, but brand new. It'll last, it'll last its lifetime again, I guess. Um, just needs to be well looked after. But yeah, all done. Look yeah. at that! In the Navy! <laughs> so this episode, you have basically seen the broad range of Dale, the Swiss Army Knives skill set. What a guy he is. Also, have a little look at this. He saved my car from disaster and luckily we caught it on CCTV. Well, actually, it would have hit my car anyway, but have a look. What a guy this guy is. But yeah, basically, Cousin Alex and Dale were arguing about who was strong enough to pump this up. But look, it's brilliant. Look at them guns. You can't buy them on eBay, can you? We've got a stockpile conveyor. These were worth it cost me double what the conveyor cost me. But to buy one when working condition would have cost me three times as much. So I'm happy. And that's it for a midweek edition of Every Trade Behind the Build. Come back on Sunday for more yard life, obviously, because God knows what will happen in the yard between now and then. We've got the run in on Project 849, squeaky bum time, as Sir Alex used to say. And who else knows? Maybe I'll get arrested or attacked with a hammer. Who knows what's going to happen between now and then? But come back on Sunday. Have a great rest of the week, guys. Go on, lad. How's it done? How'd you let it down? Ready? Oh, look at that. Woo! So. We're not actually finished yet. I forgot to mention in this episode that actually over the weekend on Saturday, we hit 10,000 subscribers and I am blown away by it, honestly. It's, uh, it's such an achievement. Someone said to me in January when we first started the channel, I didn't really know what it'd be. You know, I, we got to 1,000 subscribers pretty quick. And I was like, wow, that was ridiculous, like a week. Um, but obviously I think that was just a bounce from Instagram and things like that and then it sort of took its time and someone said this channel will be at 10,000 subscribers by the end of summer and when we're in those sort of mid numbers the mid thousands like oh, it's taking forever we were getting like two subscribers a day if that some, some days we lost subscribers I was like no chance it's not gonna it's not gonna happen this um, and then it's absolutely nuts literally the end of August whatever the last day in August was it 31st 30 days of September uh, yeah 30, 31st of August we literally ticked over and um, got 10,000 subscribers. It's amazing because all I want from this channel, all we set out for this channel to be is just to tell the story. Yeah, tell our story. Yeah, in the early days, we probably were influenced by other creators and stuff like that, but their business is different to our business. Their story isn't our story. We're in a different city, We've got different people. We do a mad range of things, as you know. That's why it's called Every Trade. The architectural side, the grab and aggregate side, the construction side, the mechanical side, preferred joinery, property. I just want to document. I don't know what each episode is going to be like. I try and bring it together so it's got some kind of order and it makes sense. But I just want to put out good, informative, and maybe sometimes entertaining content and I want to be that person that people can sort of see themselves in. We started from nothing, both me and Alex, and we might end up back at nothing. We, we, we never take whatever we get for granted. We just get up every day and just work our tripe out. Um, is that what I'm saying? Just basically bust our balls to provide for our families and build something that's gonna last. We just love building businesses so yeah hope you're enjoying this journey sorry if you'd already thought that was the end and you wanted rid of me but this is now the end have an amazing rest of the week as i always say and make sure you come back on sunday for another episode of every trade behind the build <laughs>